living in a small town certainly has its advantages. For example, you get to know everyone who lives there pretty quickly. If you ever have a problem, odds are there is someone in town with the expertise to help you. Like Jimmy, our local handyman, electrician, and plumber. If you have a household problem, Jimmy's your guy. Got a more difficult problem? Then you probably want Mac. He's our town sheriff. The only law enforcement we have for a few miles. Feeling hungry? Then Sherry's the gal for you. She runs a diner in the center of town and her pie is out of this world. What I'm trying to say is that it pays to know people. Another thing I find fantastic about living in a small town is the sheer amount of nature that surrounds us, untouched by man. Trees seem to grow endlessly into the sky. The nearby creek is crystal clear, not like those contaminated cesspools I hear about in the city. But I think the best part about living so far away from the city is the peace and quiet. It's intoxicating. Occasionally, you'll hear the rumbling of a semi-truck passing by, but that's about it. You could step outside your door at any given time and be greeted with pure silence. I've always found the silence peaceful, like our town was secretly tucked away from the rest of the world. While I do enjoy the tranquility, that's not always the case for a lot of people. I work in our only gas station for miles, and we often get a lot of passers-by stopping there to refuel before heading back out onto the road. Although most of our patrons tend to fill up at the pump and continue their journey, often I'll still get people coming inside, and they'll mention how unnaturally quiet it is in this town. Since I've only lived in this town my entire life, I never noticed how different it is from the rest of the world, but I'll just take their word for it. It just makes me uneasy, is what one of the customers said to me when I inquired further. They said they couldn't put their finger on it, just something about the utter silence of our town made them uncomfortable. Well, this town makes me uncomfortable too, but it's not the silence that drives my fear. It's something that happened to me when I was a kid. My friend Tommy and I were inseparable as children. We would do everything together, explore the woods, fish in the creek, play in one of the many meadows that littered our town until the moon signaled our curfew. It was early October when it happened. We were playing together as usual, riding bikes up and down the town, until he got the bright idea to pay a visit to the Black Briar Farm. Now, this farm has a bit of history, but I'll try to sum it up. Basically, the Blackbriars were the first to settle in this town. They were a working class family, and their main export was corn. They had cornfields as far as the eye could see. The town itself was in the early stages of forming next to the farm. Then, one day, in the middle of October, the entire Blackbriar family disappeared. Nobody knew why. Some speculated that the head of the household, Michael Blackbriar, took sick and passed away, and at that point the farm was too much to maintain without him so his family left the farm for greener pastures. Others think a pack of wolves or some other animal got to the family and tore them apart, and they were never seen again. Regardless of what happened, the farm was abandoned and had been left untouched for decades. For some reason, our town either didn't have the will or the means to tear the farm down and start anew. So the old farmhouse was left to succumb to time. Even though the house remained empty, the cornfields seemed to continue to grow year after year. They would produce, and even our local market owner would pick fresh corn from the field and use it. No point in letting it go to waste, they'd say. Then the field would wither and die only to regrow anew the following year. Tommy wanted to go exploring in the field. He had this absurd notion that the Blackbriars had a stash of treasure somewhere on the farm itself. After all, they were a large supplier of produce for a while, and the town didn't have a bank during those times, so they had to do something with all that money. Well, the sun was quickly setting as we approached the edge of the farm. Reluctantly, I followed Tommy into the looming forest of dried corn husks. 
Our footsteps crunched beneath us as we marched further inward. It was deafening how loud our footsteps were in comparison to the rest of our surroundings. As we pressed on, we began hearing a new sound. It was faint over the incessant crunch of our footfalls at first. But as we walked closer, the sound grew louder. It was crying. Someone was sitting in the cornfield softly crying to themselves. Unsure of the situation, I asked Tommy if we could head back. But he shook his head, mentioning that someone might need our help. We found ourselves in a small clearing in the field. On the other side of the clearing from where we entered, we saw it. Or rather, her. It was a woman. She sat on the cold autumn ground. She wore a silky white dress, which had been stained by the dirt she rested on. Long brownish black hair covered her face and shoulders. She sat facing away from us, and the sobs she made seemed to reverberate off the surrounding stalks of corn. Tommy fearlessly approached her and asked her if she was all right. When he did, her sobs instantly stopped. The overwhelming silence returned wafting over us. She rose to her feet, still facing away from us. I instinctively took a step backwards while Tommy took a step forward. Then she turned, but how she did it sent alarms off in my head. One second she was facing away and in the blink of an eye she was turned towards us, as if she were a glitch in a video game. She raised her head, and her hair parted from her face revealing a gory facade. Bits of flesh clung to her skull like tape. Half of her jawbone was exposed. Her eyes were gray and lifeless. Dirt seemed to pepper the remaining parts of her skin, which combined to form a sickly brownish color. Tommy and I both screamed. I immediately turned to run away, but then I heard Tommy call out to me. My body reacted on its own and I turned back. Tommy had been grabbed. Her hand gripped his wrist so tight that even from where I was standing, I could hear the bones in Tommy's wrist begin to splinter. Her mouth began to separate and elongate as if she were some sort of snake-like creature. She pulled him closer and raised him up. Tommy struggled to turn his head away from the creature to look at me, and managed to say one thing to me. The last thing I would ever hear from my best friend. Run! And I did. I ran through the cornfield as fast as I could. Tears streamed down my face like a waterfall as I realized I left my best friend behind to die. I made it to my bike and pedaled as fast as I could to the police station. I told Mac everything that had happened. He quickly gathered up a search party, and it was almost every single person in town. After combing the cornfield for hours, they found no trace of the woman and the only thing they found of Tommy's was a discarded shoe. Weeks turned into months, which turned to years. Eventually, everyone in the town started to forget. It was just another tragic missing child's case. Everyone aside from Tommy's parents and myself, that is. New children began telling stories about the cornfield. How anyone who goes in there is never heard from again. Those stories aren't entirely accurate because I was with Tommy that day, and I made it out alive. Not a single day goes by that I don't regret what I did, and not a single night goes by that I don't have to drink myself into a drunken slumber. For my entire life, I never had the means to leave this town. Until now. Ever since I started working at this gas station, I've saved up enough money to move away from this town for good. To start a new life somewhere far away. Away from the cornfield. And away from the tragic memory of my dear friend. I planned on leaving at the end of October. But two nights ago, after I was closing up the gas station, I heard it. The silence broken by the faintest of sobs coming from the other side of the road. My body seized as I saw her, standing there on the other side of the road. 
I wanted to believe that she was just a hallucination, but I knew better than that. She was facing away from me, and without even giving her a second to turn around, I sprinted to my car, got inside, and drove away. I'm at home right now, and I wanted to type this up before I leave this place for good. Just so whoever hears this knows how sorry I am for Tommy, and to stay away from the Black Briar Farm. I'm not really sure where I'm going to go, but I need to hurry. I left my window open and I think I just heard a sob coming from outside. So if I don't make it, remember, if you hear a woman softly crying to herself, just stay away and call the police. Or you might end up just like my best friend, Tommy.